is the case for under eight and a half wins. I don't know if Anthony Richardson's going to stay healthy because he injured his shoulder last year. Is that it? It's, it's not even just, is he going to stay healthy? It's how he's going to play when he is healthy, because I believe he could be healthy for all 17 games, right? Like let's, okay. let's say that's the case. Let's say he's healthy for 17 games. I still think there's enough variance in what he's going to give us from hell play to play, let alone series to series, quarter to quarter, week to week that while I, I just think there's a lot of boom or bust potential on this team in general. And it's sort of personified by their starting quarterback. I, I know I've beaten this horse to death and beyond, but I really do believe it when I say he's going to have moments where we go, oh my God, did you just see what Anthony Richardson did? And then moments yeah. where you go, oh my God, did you see what Anthony Richardson just did? Because he's a rookie quarterback still, right? Like you mentioned playing fewer than four full games. I mean, there is something to be said for the growth that takes place in a rookie quarterback. And I think, yes, he's had the full off season, which is important for quarterbacks. I get that. Um, and the potential of growth from your first to your second season is always greatest for a young starting quarterback. But I also think there's a wealth of things he hasn't yet experienced at the NFL level because he has only played a little less than four full games. And so there will be moments where he's presented with opportunities to make a play and perhaps makes a mistake instead. And I think that's why I like the under eight and a half, because I still Ooh. see him as a rookie quarterback until we get beyond Thanksgiving, which I think is an important line of demarcation for this team we can get to in a minute. But the first yeah. three quarters of the season, he's still a rookie quarterback. If he does go down to an injury, if you're worried about him being fragile or not looking great, sneaky strong move bringing in joe flacco cleveland mm -hmm. the team we broke down yesterday you don't want them we'll take them for the same amount of money we'll just give them this bonus where you have the potential to, to earn almost nine million dollars if you end up playing a lot the steichen with flacco i'm not saying it's a better option but if you're forced to deal with that I don't have any concerns if I have an eight and a half. If I have an eight and a half with the seventh easiest schedule in the NFL with Steichen as they add weapons, they did not expect Latu to be available with the 15th overall pick. Ballard right. was not expecting that. Viewed by many as the best edge rusher in this draft. We get the position, but still, to get the best in any draft sitting there in the middle, most GMs would take that. And then after that, they continue to add, to try to help him. They give Pittman the extension in the offseason. We'll see. I still feel like we've been waiting for that wow, mo wow movement, movement uh, from Pittman where it just takes off. Maybe it's going to happen now. But A.D. Mitchell and then two, two offensive linemen, one that you watched over at Pitt in the third round. Uh, mm -hmm. But the expectation is going into the year, okay, your backups, if you're forced into work, fine. We'll give you an opportunity to earn playing time in camp, but they're not dependent on those guys. So you bring in a receiver. You bring in two linemen to protect him. Another situation, the, the league is finally getting it. You can't just bring in, draft a quarterback very high and say, right. go fix everything. They're building around them. And uh, I think I, I respect what Ballard is doing. I like his approach to the offseason here. So I, I agree with everything you said about the way they've built this. And I, I think in that regard, we agree. They're doing that part right. Um, it's just I expect the growing pains to exist a little bit longer um, despite the veteran experience around some of these young guys. And, and Michael Pittman Jr. qualifies as a veteran now. So, yeah, you want to see more than four touchdown catches out of him, right? You want to see Jonathan Taylor stay healthy again for a full season. Maybe part of that is not necessarily feeding him over and over and over again. Um, but this is what's interesting to me is you mentioned the seventh easiest schedule. That's because basically their final five weeks – I don't want to call it a cakewalk. There's no five-week portion of anybody's schedule in the NFL that's a cakewalk. There's just too much parity. But their final five games, 
which start the weekend of Thanksgiving and beyond. And they get a late bye, which I think is good for them in week 14. So their bye is in December. But you get beyond Thanksgiving. And let's rattle off the schedule here. Thanksgiving weekend, they are at New England. Well, that's going to be a dumpster fire. Uh, Two weeks later, after a bye, they're in Denver. Probably a pretty similar smoldering ember of a dumpster fire by then. And then home to Tennessee at the Giants. Hmm, Speaking of dumpster fires. And then week 18, final game of the season, they host Jacksonville. So they've got two home division games, neither of which is against the division favorite. And three games, granted all on the road, but three games against bad, bad teams in the Patriots, Broncos, and Giants. They should go at least four and one down the stretch. And coupled with the fact that if he has remained healthy, Anthony Richardson will have started 12 games and played 12 games and will have a full 16 games under his belt by that point. Coupled with the fact that Latu will be through about three quarters of a season. Some people will make Mitchell the same. Some people will make the argument, oh, well, they'll be hitting that, you know, that rookie wall. Maybe they will have gained so much experience that they'll be growing at that point rather than regressing because of that rookie wall. I think if you want to make an argument for Indy, I can get behind it if you can tell me they get through November 500 or better. If they get through the first 12 weeks, six and six, then yes, I am on board with Indy being a team that could win 10 games and maybe even win the division depending on how Stroud progresses or does not this year. But it's all about getting through the first 12 weeks, in particular the first four weeks, Joe. Like, they open up against the Texans, which James yep. mentioned earlier, and then at Green Bay, pretty going to be dogs there, no doubt, and then Bears at home, Steelers at home. So it's not the easiest four games to open up. you got to start at least two and two in September. He's seven to one, fourth on the board to win comeback player of the year at Bet MGM. Yes. Uh, he's 50 to one to win offensive player of the year, if you like a big number there, tied for 16th on the board. Let's start with Anthony Richardson because it's not just the 32, 50 and a hook in passing yards and the 17 and a half passing touchdowns that are interesting. It's more, I think, the rushing numbers, the 525 and a hook on rushing yards, the eight and a half rushing touchdowns. Is eight and a half rushing touchdowns light? That was my reaction. Feels that way. That you're just kind of, they're playing it down the middle because he just missed the majority of his rookie campaign. Because in three and a half games, he had four rushing touchdowns. And I'm not sitting here saying he's going to average one per game for the entire year, but eight and a half, geez, if you give him a half a season, he might come close to that number. Might be. Um, Probably takes off more in the second half, but he's got to put together a season. Yeah, that's that certainly jumped out to me. Um, of the Richardson props, I was looking at the rushing touchdowns. Not so much the rushing yards. Passing yards, I don't know. They still lean a little bit on the run game. And you're probably going to even more so with Richardson. That win total of eight and a half is also in a range that I do like to bet these coaches at you know because it means you're good enough where you have a specific floor and then you could also impress if you win the division if they win the division he's automatically in this conversation if you're betting them at plus 330 to win this division you should be putting something on Steichen at 16 to 1 for coach of the year yes I, I think just because of the number it's it's a smart bet I think the actual the actuality of him winning it I think you need a lot more to fall right than I expect to fall right for the Colts right but I can't argue with the number 14 15 16 to 1 because to your point if they do win the division it's definitely live the long shot on the board is Stefanski last year's winner 70 to 1 and I do understand that because if he were to win that would be three and five years and now he's Belichick yeah, it's come stupid. on. What are we doing? Yeah, it's Kevin Stefanski. Yeah. The man forgets that his running backs exist at times. No, please don't. 
I'm 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 not upset that I wasn't here yesterday. And they funnel the jealousy. offense through Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb, no, no, who no, they no, didn't no. have last year for those eleven wins, by the way. God, what are you right, talking about? Who they about? didn't have and who Stefanski routinely forgets exists. He doesn't feed Chubb the way Chubb should be fed because he's I'm, I'm an offensive guy. Look at me. I'm Kevin Stefanski. Let's throw the ball. No, you dumbass. Stefanski. I think he's wildly overrated. You're insane. Latu is second on the board for defensive rookie of the year at five to one. Adonai Mitchell, 40 to one for offensive rookie of the year. He's down the board farther, obviously a longer shot tied him no. a, a, with a few others, 14th on the board. But no. I don't, I, I don't think defensive or offensive rookie of the year necessarily, but I like both of these players to have an impact. The question is if the number got a little bit bigger in Latu's case, would I be on it? I think I may. Uh, okay. Yeah, that, that would be the one. That'd be the one. Um, I was disappointed. Didn't see any prop numbers for Mitchell. Didn't see any for Downs. Mm -mm. There are some for Richardson. We went over that. Taylor and Pittman, and that's it. I'm not interested in these Taylor or Pittman numbers. Just, just tell Pittman me. Four and a half Who's... touchdowns over, finally? I'm not. I'm not playing that game. Yeah. And it's no. five and a half at other sports books. Who's winning this division? The Texans. <laughs>